This is a question I get asked on a near daily basis. How can I hold my breath longer when I'm spearfishing? Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Daniel Mann. In this video, I'm going to go through the question that I get asked all the time. How can I hold my breath longer when I'm spearfishing? And what is your breathe up technique? Now, to burst any bubbles right off the bat, there's no magic pill, there's no silver bullet that will enable you to go out tomorrow and hold your breath three or four times as long as what you currently are doing. Sorry to say that, it just does not work like that. In this video, I'm not going to go through techniques or exercises to make you hold your breath longer. I'm going to bring to your attention some of the things that decrease your breath hold. These are subconscious and conscious things that you can work on. And overall, if you reduce the things that are reducing your breath hold, your breath hold's going to increase. Before we get into the first point, I want to make something very clear. Freediving and spearfishing are two completely different things. Yes, there are similarities between them. You have a wetsuit, you have fins, you're holding your breath, you're diving. But the difference is, freediving is a controlled environment with a clear goal. You're doing one dive during the day and you know what that is, it's planned. Spearfishing, unpredictable. You don't know if you're going to be diving five meters, 10 meters, 25 meters. You don't know if you're going to be doing 10 dives or 100 dives in a day. You don't know what the conditions are like all the time. There's so many variables in spearfishing. You can't translate what you can do free diving into spearfishing. The best analogy I can give for this is driving a Ferrari around a racetrack. You can do 150 mile an hour around a racetrack very easily, relatively safely. You try and do the same thing in a built up city, there's pedestrians, there's roads not designed for that Ferrari doing 150 mile an hour. There's all sorts of things, there's traffic lights, there's other people, things you can't control. That's spearfishing. Just because you can drive the car fast around a racetrack doesn't mean you can drive it on a public road safely. First cab off the rank is relaxation. Now this may seem like a bit of a no derb, of course that's obvious sort of comment, but for me it is the biggest single influence on how well my dive is going to be. Am I relaxed or not? Things for me that detract from being comfortable in the water, a wetsuit. For the first five years I had an ill-fitting wetsuit. Not only does this cause chafing and you're uncomfortable, it lets water in, so you're cold. If you're cold and uncomfortable, you can't hold your breath, you can't fully focus on being relaxed because you're always worried about being cold. You try and move around a bit more. Another big thing for equipment is the foot pockets. I've had foot pockets that are way too small for me and they cramp up your feet and that's all you can think about all day. So make sure you get some foot pockets that fit you. If you don't know how to get foot pockets that fit you, Go join a spearfishing club and ask to do a pool night. Get everyone around. They have various different brands and sizes and you can try on different foot pockets, preferably in a pool, and you can find the ones that fit your feet properly. Or go support your local dive store and check out the foot pockets that they have there. Another big one for me is seasickness. And if I don't take my seasick pills, I will throw up and blow chunks everywhere. It's very hard to concentrate on holding your breath when all you're trying not to do is throw up through your snorkel and drown on the surface. If seasickness is a problem for you, go to a doctor, get seasick pills, get something so you can alleviate yourself from that because it is no fun and you cannot hold your breath when you're being seasick. Also, maybe go out on days that aren't so rough. I know you might not get as many days like that, but if you get seasick and it's causing you anxiety about getting seasick, I've also been there as well where you get worried about getting seasick even though you're not seasick and then you go down this spiral of getting seasick. Go out on a flat day. Guarantee you won't feel any of those feelings about being seasick because you know it's flat and you're not going to get sick. Another massive thing that will reduce your breath hold is not having trust in your dive buddy. If you don't trust the person on the surface to be there when you come up from your dive, you are not going to be relaxed. It all ties in together. If you're not relaxed, if you don't trust your dive buddy, you're not going to dive well. Find someone that you trust and you know is going to be on the surface when you return from that big dive because that will help you relax and ultimately you'll have a better dive. The other thing that follows on from that is having a good skipper. I can't count the amount of times that I've been in the water and I keep looking up. I don't trust the person driving the boat because they've driven in the opposite direction or they haven't picked me up very quickly or they don't seem to be keeping an eye on me. It's happened to me in Tonga, it's happened to me in Australia, it's happened to me in Norway where I can't get the attention of the boat driver and you cannot dive, you cannot relax. There's no way I'm going to be able to relax on the surface and focus everything on this dive if I don't know I'm going to get home at night because the boat's not there. So make sure you discuss with the crew on the boat 
what's expected of the person driving the boat because what goes in somebody else's boat may not go with what you expect is going to happen and that can cause lack of communication and ultimately probably a fight because somebody won't pick you up quick enough. Have signals as well. Normally, I stick the end of my gun up in the air if I want to get picked up. That's what the crew that I dive with know. They come and pick me up. It's pretty simple. Another thing that will hinder relaxation is sharks, current and dirty water. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about those things unless you move spots if there's sharks, find somewhere out of the current if there's a lot of tide or you could wait for the slack tide and dirty water, find somewhere cleaner, but that's not always an option. Unfortunately, those things just have to be worked on over time and you can't rush those. I have become a little bit more comfortable with dirty water over the past few years diving in the UK because it's very dirty. I dived in a lot of dirty water in Australia as well, especially here in the UK not many sharks or very rare to find a shark so it's very easy to relax because you're in dirty water and you know there's not really anything in the water that's coming to get you in places there's sharks that's a little more difficult to do and that just takes time to work on and if you're not comfortable with those things move somewhere else dive somewhere else and you'll be diving better for it and shooting more fish a few final things that hinder relaxation for me are thinking about work family and often my parking at Brighton actually, because when I go there, I sometimes forget if my dive watch is on GMT or if it's on BST, and then I don't have time. And then I'm worried that I'm in the water too long. If I'm worried that I'm in the water too long, if I'm worried that I'm in the water too long, if I'm Brighton, you get the point. You're not going to be relaxed when you're thinking about those things. Do whatever you can to compartmentalize those thoughts and put them away. It's very easy for me to say that, but there are techniques that you can work on to focus on exactly what you're doing and not worry about work because it doesn't matter matter when you're in the water. It doesn't matter about the parking because you can't do anything about it. You should have sorted it out beforehand. If there's an issue at home, try and sort it out before you go diving because if you don't, that's all you're gonna be thinking about and then you can't fully relax because you're distracted. The next thing that will destroy your breath hold is incorrect weighting. And I don't mean having too little weight on, I mean having too much. been waiting a while for this brand new Dive Everywhere t-shirts with the Halibut design featuring myself and Jose on the back. If you want to get one of those, diveeverywhere.co. Back to the weight belt. I don't mean too little weight, I mean too much weight. I see so many divers out there that have far too much weight on their weight belts and their weight vest, they're completely loaded up. They struggle to get down, so they think that I'll just put more lead on and that will help me dive and I'll be able to stay on the bottom longer because it's easier to get down. If you're sitting on the surface and you completely exhale and you don't move a muscle and you sink, you have way too much weight on your weight belt. You are constantly going to be fighting that extra weight on the surface, so you will always be slowly moving your feet or your arms on the surface. That's burning oxygen, and that's not allowing your body to fully recover after a dive, and your breath hold's going to suffer, and it's going to get worse as the day goes on. There are certain circumstances where you do want to have a little bit more weight on. If you're diving very shallow water, three or four meters, it might help to have an extra weight on, and it might be a little bit uncomfortable on the surface, but if you're diving six meters plus, you don't need to be having that much weight on. You need to work on your duck dive, which is a great segue into the next point, duck dive. The duck dive is the start of every dive that you do, and if you get it wrong or you're inefficient doing it, you're on the back foot straight off the bat, your breath hold is going to suffer. So a duck dive should be one fluid, smooth motion. In fact, if you have a correct duck dive, you don't actually need a weight belt to get down. I can easily dive to 15 meters in a five millimeter suit without a weight belt because my duck dive is relatively good. I'm sure I could work on it, but I've worked on it over the years to make it as efficient as possible. And the basic technique is when you're on the surface, bend at the hips, bend forward, one leg up in the air so your body forms a straight line like this. I keep one leg under the surface for a little bit of grip and then gravity does its thing, the body will shoot straight down and then you begin kicking. There's so many people out there that I see just sort of roll over in the water and their fins are flapping in the air, they've got no traction because they're in the air and it just doesn't work and they make a big splashing sound, scare all the fish. You want to be very silent on your duck dive and make it as efficient as possible. Now that we've started our duck dive, the next thing that's going to slow us down and be inefficient in the water is our shape. How far are we sticking our hand out when we're diving down? 
Is our elbow out like this where we're equalizing? Is our gun out here? Are we looking up all the time? All these things are going to contribute to having a very large profile and given that water is approximately 800 times more dense than air, it's really inefficient to be doing that when you're diving. When I'm heading to the bottom, I always try and tuck my chin in. Not only does this reduce the profile of my body, it also helps me resist the temptation to look around all the time. I might take a peek when I think I'm five or seven meters off the bottom so I can see where to land, but other than that, keeping the head tucked in, elbow for the equalizing, don't have it out here. Have it tucked up against your body like this and your gun, hold it close to you like this, or you can hold the handle down and have the gun up here and sometimes you can hold it your nose and then hold the tip of the gun here like this. How big are your kicks? Are you kicking super wide and going beyond the profile of your body? All these sorts of things add up to inefficiencies when you're in the water and ultimately inefficiencies lead to less of a breath hold. For me, the most important piece of information displayed on a dive watch is not the depth. It is the surface interval. I'm interested in how long I've been on the surface between dives. That is paramount in keeping you safe and alive and not blacking out and also being able to hold your breath, giving yourself adequate time to recover. Me personally, I give myself at least three times what my dive was. If I'm down for 30 seconds, I'm on the surface for a minute and 30 seconds. If I'm down for a minute and a half, I'm on the surface for at least four and a half minutes before I even dive again. This gives your body enough time to relax, recover, expel that CO2, get oxygen back into your muscles and fully relax and get ready to dive again. If I'm diving a little bit deeper or it's been a particularly long dive, I'll give myself sometimes four or five times my previous dive before I'm ready to dive again. Another factor that is grossly overlooked in this day and age is sleep. Everybody thinks they can get away on five or six hours of sleep and still perform at their best. You might get away with one day, but if you've had a few nights where you don't have any good sleep, your performance will suffer. If you're getting up particularly early, as most of the time we are when we go diving, three or four o'clock in the morning, try getting up a little bit earlier the day before so it's not such a shock to the system and it's easier to fall asleep the night before. It's very easy. You can just do that and it'll mitigate your sleepiness. I've been on some long trips out of Brisbane, day trips up the Barrier Reef, and I've done them on three or four hours sleep. I get to the end of the day, I am absolutely cooked. I'm done, I can't dive well at all. I feel physically weak and tired. I've done the same trips on eight hours sleep. My word, what a difference. I've shot way more fish and I feel fresh at the end of the day. Get enough sleep before diving. You'll be amazed at what it can do for your performance. Final point that you may or may not have been waiting for, what is my breathe up technique? I'll show you right now. That's it, I just, I breathe normally. I passively breathe, tidal breathing, whatever you want to call it. I don't do anything other than breathe like this on the surface and try and relax. That may be disappointing to some of you out there, but that sustains my body for nearly all of its life, just passive tidal breathing. So it's what we do every day to stay alive. So it's a pretty good way to breathe. The reason why I don't do any deep breathing is because I do not want to hyperventilate. Hyperventilation is anything other than normal breathing like this. So if you, that's hyperventilation. If you do that for a minute before diving, you will trick your body into thinking you have more oxygen than you actually do. What hyperventilation does is it rids your body of CO2. And buildup of CO2 is actually what makes you want to breathe. That's your urge to breathe. That's what your body senses and says, oh, I need to breathe now. I have no oxygen, but it's not actually your low oxygen trigger. It's high CO2. If you're diving and you've hyperventilated, you're not going to get that urge to breathe and you're going to think you can stay down there much longer than you actually can. And that's when blackouts can and will occur on the way back to the surface. If you hyperventilate before a dive, stop it now. It is extremely dangerous. When I've had adequate surface interval and I'm ready to dive, all I will do is passively exhale everything in my chest and then inhale from my stomach, using my diaphragm into my chest, rolling the shoulders back to get a full breath of air and then dive. It's just one big breath and that's it. If you want to learn how to take that full entire breath utilizing your diaphragm and all the parts of your body, you can go do a spearfishing course and they will teach you in that. Or there are plenty of resources online where you can figure out how to do a complete inhale before you dive. Ultimately, relaxation is the biggest key to holding your breath in the water. And unfortunately, some things you can't rush. 
It can take years and decades sometimes to get comfortable in the water, where you can jump in in any environment and instantly be comfortable and ready to dive at your best. It's a journey, so enjoy it. It's not going to happen overnight. But also remember that you don't need to hold your breath for a very long time to shoot fish. I've shot some of my best fish in less than 20 seconds. I've shot my biggest fish, a 47 kilo halibut. It was probably a 15 second dive. It would have tasted the same if I shot that fish after two minutes. It doesn't really matter. If you're getting out there and you focus on hunting the fish, breath hold will naturally come with your spearfishing journey. So don't try and rush it. Just focus on shooting the fish because that's what we're here for, to shoot the fish. If you want to hold your breath for a very long time, get into free diving. If you want to shoot fish, just focus on shooting the fish and the breath hold will naturally come. If you liked this video or got something out of it, give it a thumbs up, it actually makes a difference. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you on the next one. Wait for it.